There are some drivers who just seem to crash every time they're in a big situation, or if they're on screen. Drivers like Stephen Wallace or Danica Patrick come to mind. But while they did wreck relatively often, they also didn't have too much major success either. But those aren't the drivers that I'm thinking of right now. The one I'm thinking of right now is Brian Vickers. Vickers is a driver that is very, very unique when it comes to both his career and how he used the opportunities he gathered throughout that career. Vickers started out early on at Hendrick Motorsports, first in the Bush Series and then in Cup. In Bush, he won the 2003 championship by a hair over the likes of David Green, Ron Hornaday Jr., and Bobby Hamilton Jr. So, in moving up to the Cup Series in 2004, Vickers would have some of the best equipment in the business, just like he did in the Bush Series. But as a rookie, mistakes were bound to be made. And one of the largest ones was seen at Pocono. Casino, oh, oh cr trouble. crashing. Bobby Labonte's into the wall, turn one. Just misses getting collected as he skids back across the racetrack. Bobby Labonte, not happy. Looks like he got hit. He's going to get hit by, looks like... Well, I don't want to say Brian like, Vickers. Brian Vickers, that's who I thought it was. The wreck would be huge, not only for Bobby Labonte's season, but also his career. Labonte ended up missing the 2004 chase for the Nextel Cup by 49 points. In the wreck that Vickers caused, he went from running 12th to finishing 29th. So, this would equate to 51 points. Had Vickers not taken him out, he very well may have been in the inaugural chase. But this was only the beginning for Vickers. We're getting exciting down here, boys. Go or go home time right now. Vickers turns it to the bottom, He's but he a, can't get by. He can't get on. He just can't get enough nose under him without getting into him. Oh, oh he, he did get him. He spins him in. Vickers wins. He did. Vickers is beating him across the line just by a car lane. Mike Bliss did a whale of a job. Did we make it? Did we make it? No, Mike. You didn't make it. Vickers would go on to finish third in the All-Star race, so at least this wasn't all for not as he was competitive. But being competitive wasn't something that he could consistently do at Hendrick. So by the end of 2006, it was known that he wouldn't be back at HMS in 2007. This made Vickers' most famous act really, really awkward if you think about it. Vickers wants to go. Getting a little wider. There he goes. Junior. Oh, no. Vickers hits the 48. Hook the 48. It takes out Earnhardt and Jimmy Johnson. Caution is out. The leaders had already taken the white flag. So not only did he crash his teammate out of the way as he was racing for a championship, he also crashed Dale Earnhardt Jr. at Talladega. A Dale Earnhardt Jr. that was in the lead, no less. The said Talladega crowd was not having it when Vickers tried to blame Junior then for the wreck. Not quite exactly how I planned it. Uh, you know, Jimmy had a heck of a run and I was pushing him. And then when he turned turned down, I got off of him and he and he turned down to pass the eight and the eight just kept pushing him down. And when, when he jerked to, to avoid the eight, trying to block him, I just got in the back of him. I apologize. That's the last thing I want to do is, uh, was get into Jimmy and all that take place. But, uh, uh, you know, when the eight... Job chopped him and Jimmy swerved and and I, I just got him. It's not how I wanted to win it, but but it's nice to get a win for this 25 car. It's been a long time. I was going to say, can you explain the mixed emotions that this must bring for you? After racing for Hendrick, though, he jumped over to Red Bull, and in just the second weekend as a point-paying racer for the team, he scored a 10th place finish. While a good finish in most instances that wouldn't be really remembered too much, this was monumental in NASCAR history as it was the first top 10 cup finish for a manufacturer called Toyota. Yes, Brian Vickers scored the first top 10 for Toyota in cup. Remember, while I am calling Vickers a wreck magnet, I also said that he was a successful driver as well. While having struggles in 2007, he improved mightily in 2008 contending for wins, and in 2009, he looked to break out. That would have to happen, though, after Dale Earnhardt Jr. would get his revenge at the 500. And all of those cars are cars that had made green flag stops prior to that caution. Boy, Brian Vickers, Dale Earnhardt Jr., that ain't going to work, boys. Vickers hard. Here we go. Kyle Busch, the dominant car of the day, in the wall. That was wrong. And that 10 was... cars sliding, slamming into the infield. Jimmy that Johnson totally uncalled for. 
Totally. I don't care who you are. That was just wrong. Even with this, by the end of the summer, Vickers was in contention for a spot in the 12-man chase. This all led up to Michigan a few weeks before the chase started. Brian Vickers, the pole sitter, hasn't won since 2006. Pulling hard off turn two. And it was right here back in June that the leader's car began to sputter and cough. That was Greg Biffle. Right now, Vickers still under power. Looking good so far. Yeah, and he was probably about half throttle going down the back straightaway because he knows that Jeff Gordon's in the same position. He doesn't really have to worry about him. He's going to make it. Brian Vickers looks like he's going to make it happen. Get to us, bud. Get it to us. And coming down for the checkered flag for his second career win, Brian Vickers does it at Michigan. With Vickers' win, he was able to qualify for the chase. While being the 12th and final finisher in points, it still was a huge step up for his career. And 2010 was looking to be similar. Running between 10th and 20th most weeks like he did in 2009 and being in the hunt for another chase spot. Unfortunately, this season would have to be cut short as Vickers would suffer from blood clots. But he would be back in 2011. And this is where, for better or worse, his legacy with the fans seems to be cemented in. I love Dale Jr. He's got a way about him. It's just it's calm. <laughs> that was comical. Actually, the 83 car actually saved the six from shooting back across the racetrack. Now, I use this crash as an example. This is a normal wreck that Vickers couldn't avoid, much more different than his later season meltdown. That was a race for 26th position. That's not normally somewhere that you put yourself in a three wide position. And it wasn't even a door or but really a open. slide opening there at all that, that Ambrose, yeah. Now there's a little follow up there. Huh. Tear it up anymore if you can. Please let it roll. Cup. Hit pit road here. Hit pit road. Uh huh. Yeah, I'll tell you, he's not Vickers. He's just not happy about what happened there. You can't blame him for no, that. I don't blame him at all. Let's see right here. Oh yeah. NASCAR has told Brian Vickers to take that car to the garage area and keep it there for a while. Uh, McMurray and Brian Vickers here, 1 and 83, going down into turn three. Hmm. Well, I'm going to give Brian Vickers the benefit that he got a little loose right there. Hard shot for McMurray there. I don't, you might give him the benefit, but I'm not sure McMurray's going well, to. His wheels are right, and he had his brakes locked up, so all of that combined. <laughs> it's a big hit for Jamie. Listen that to was. this. So as McMurray starts to drive away from the accident scene, he leaves some things behind. Oh, oh, is that, that's like. Those are the batteries from his car yep. now playing on the racetrack. And then when Vickers comes by McMurray, well, I know baseball season just ended, but we'll call that a swing and a miss for sure. <laughs> well, you didn't really miss. All right. How about a foul ball then? Yeah. Like, would you call it Dale the change up? <laughs> yeah, he was expecting a change up in his four fresh tires. Oh, oh my. that's what that was. Matt Kenseth had just come back on the racetrack. I think he might have done this Red Bull Toyota in now. We're done. Whoa, whoa, contact there. Brian Vickers pushing Matt Kenseth. Martinsville payback issued at Phoenix. It sure was. That's all that was. To say that 2011 was a black eye on his career would be an understatement. But after this, Vickers would go to part-time racing at MWR driving the 55 Toyota. And in 2013, he'd actually finally have one last chance to shine. Here we Three go. wide into one. Wow, look at Vickers up on that Good high move. side. Holy cow, that was strong. Strong Vickers move by Vickers, clear Vickers, man. Stewart and has the lead. A lap and a half to go. And then Stewart's out of gas. Stewart in the outside lane is rolling slow. Kyle Busch goes by. Jeff Burton, Brad Keselowski doing the same. Yeah, it's, yeah Tony's out of gas for sure. Well, I thought it picked back up there. 
White flag is out for Brian Vickers. We're out of field here, guys. Oh, he's, right? oh man. Oh. Denny Hamlin. Yeah. Miss Tony Stewart coming down the straightaway. I'm going to tell you, a great restart by Vickers, but that was incredible. Yes, hanging was. on the outside with two guys on the inside was pretty awesome. And Eric Almarola did a great job of being in that outside line, not running all over Tony and getting back down and squeezing into fifth place there. Brian Vickers hadn't won in 75 races. Running part-time for Michael Waltrip Racing. Bye, Welcome Thank back you to Victory Lane. Vickers wins it at New Hampshire. With this win, he would have three on his career. And at this point, he was an underdog winner, so fans actually were pulling for him to win. And after running respectably in the 17 races he did run in 2013, he was given a final chance to run full-time in 2014. This, of course, ended up in calamity. Racing gets a little harder. Yeah, Casey Kane's like, I got to go. I can't, I can't cut you any brakes right now. He sure turned him around, though. And oh, trouble, Vickers gets Kane. That was coming, caution is out, caution is out inside, thanks Brian. Almost really got Brad Keselowski it. mixed up in that, that's some damage on Kane's car. Little payback there from an earlier incident. I think I mentioned earlier about keeping that list, if you're scoring at home. Well, that was 1-1 one, one so far, yep. I guess, isn't it? Tie game. I don't know, I think uh, Casey Kane got the worst of that one. Yep, got a caution and we expected that was oh. coming. Let me guess. The five got near the 55. Yep, I think that's what you're going to see. Helping us. Caution's out. I'll tell them thanks. You're all clear. I wonder if Casey's splitter bottomed out right there. Yeah, he might have caught the curb, maybe is what he's going to say. <laughs> and with this, Vickers would run two small stints in cup before calling it a career. Two races in the 55 in 2015, and then five races to fill in the 14 car for an injured Tony Stewart. At Martinsville, he locked up his final career top 10 with the 7th place run. Very respectable. His final race, fitting enough, ended in a wreck. After this, a 37th place run. His career was over. Vickers dipped his toes into TV analysis, but after his wife, Sarah Kellen Vickers, was found to be one of Jeffrey Epstein's aides, the former driver has went radio silent. So now, I want to hand it off to you. What do you remember about Brian Vickers? Do you remember the good? Do you remember the bad? Or do you remember the ugly? Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time... Have a good one.